Okay. Back up. All right. Spring is upon us. And I'm going to be wanting to do some riding and riding with my grandkids. Now, um, I wanted to just show y'all a little bit of this mare's progress. This is Diva. Turn around, Diva. Look how easy she turns. She is a direct armed and dangerous mare. She is six years old. I just got her in November. And I haven't been able to come out and work much because I take care of my dad. Now, I'm working these horses, made, I, and I didn't start when it was really cold and wet and rainy up here, so I didn't do a lot in December and January. I, I let him take the first couple weeks to just get settled in. Anyway, I'm taking her through the Clinton Anderson program because my intention is for her to be a good little grandkid cowboy horse, even one that can do obstacles. And so I want to just show you a little bit of her progress. I'm going to go through some of the exercises. The first thing I want to show is her confirmation. She is a very straight back horse, as you can see that. I hope that you can see that from there. I don't even know what all you can see from there, but let me pull her up a little. Come on. Whoa. Isn't that good? <laughs> she's a straight-backed horse. For a Tennessee walking horse, I'd say she's a little bit, especially one as small as her. She's 14'3", one inch shy of being a pony. She is a pony in Tennessee walking horse official affiliated classes. She's a little wide in the chest. Uh, her neck comes like straight out. So she's built to be like a lower head carrying horse and I think she's built to be western and kind of cowboy oriented. She's very muscular and she's going to be more muscular. She has a nice round butt, a big barrel, and she has a good temperament. She's not 100% fired up, but she's not 100% lazy, but she's more on the lazy side than she is the fired up side. And I like that because those are the kind of horses that instead of always looking to speed up, they're gonna always be looking to slow down. And with kids, wouldn't you rather, rather a horse that's looking to slow down more so than they're looking to speed up? And they do come in both temperaments. So the first thing Clinton Anderson does, and I wanna show you Diva's progress in the fundamentals is he round pins. Uh, I haven't been doing much round pending, maybe three times, and the reason is, is I usually come out here at night. So that's one part of the fundamentals that I'm skipping, but I'm not going to totally skip it. I'm just going to do it all at once here in a couple, probably sometime next week or the next, when I get to come out here in the daytime. So the first thing he does is desensitize to the tools that he's going to be using to let the horse know that they won't hurt. So he throws the rope over the back, okay, and rubs them. And if they fight it, he keeps doing it. Like if she was moving, I would keep going like this. I would keep my hand about two feet, 18 inches to two feet from her. She thinks I'm asking her to back up. And uh, I would just keep doing it until she stood still. And what you're looking for it's for them to relax because you're teaching them to be a relaxed horse. And that is shown by standing still like this or licking their chops, lowering their head or cocking a foot or taking a big deep breath. Yeah, those, those are the signs of relaxation. Then he takes it and throws it over the butt. Okay, and no reaction there girl and he does he does move uh, between the 45 degree angle and right in front of their face okay so then the neck 
and still no reaction. She's a two-year-old in a six-year-old body or a six-year-old with a two-year-old mind. And then every time that they get distracted, you use the rope halter so that you can just bump their little heads right back to you. You want to keep their attention on you. Around the hocks. Around the knees. No reaction. And then you want to do the same thing on both sides. Which I'm going to do. Good girl. And I'm going to make it quick. And that was maybe a little too quick, but she didn't move, so that's still good. Front legs, hind legs, okay? So that's the rope. The only other thing that he does with the rope is he stands a little further back, and he actually throws it, because he wants to be able to throw things at the horse and not have him freak out. So that was a perfect throw, thank you very much. I'm not going to throw it from the other side to save time. The next thing that he does, and this is just showing y'all her coming through the fundamentals real quick, is desensitized to the stick and string. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And again, any of these exercises that they don't do, you do them until you, you keep going with it until they relax. If she wasn't relaxed, like seven or eight seconds is good, or any of the other signs. So standing still for her right now is good. Okay, so that's that exercise, and it may take a lot more than that. So you go to the other side, and you have to work on this until your horse learns to relax. Right now she's tipping her head, so I'm just gonna stay with it until I see something they're going to stand still eight to ten seconds. One, two. She's looking me right in the eye, which is what I want. I want her attention so focused on me. And standing perfectly still like that counts as being relaxed. Good girl. Okay. And so then you do the same thing. You take the, the stick and string throw it over the belly and you rub them. You don't want them moving. Throw it over the butt. And if they won't stand still for this, you keep doing it. You just go with them. Wherever they go, you go with them until they will stand still. Okay, so you do all the same things that you did. And because she's learned it, she's learned it, so she's not moving at all. Oh, I forgot the butt. You always do both sides because they can have a totally different reaction on a different side. Okay? And then there's the back and forth in front of their face. And this is important because, you know, the head, that's a really big, shy area. So you want to figure eight it back and forth. And this is where a lot of them will run off. And again, you just follow them. You keep doing it until they stop. When they stop, you reward. And these pats on the head, he does a lot of because they're on the head. And there's a lot going on around the face. Okay. And then the last stick and string exercise that he does is what's called the helicopter. And you kind of make an ankle helicopter whirl around the butt. So then there's the backing 
and uh, the far, he has like four different backing methods. One is you just hold the rope and it's okay to let it drag the gun around and you begin making the backing motion. This will really help because you'll be able to back them up from the feed bowl in the stall. Say that. Back, two, three, two. Back, two, three, four. Back, two. And she backed. Now, as we progress, good girl. As we progress with this horse, I'm gonna ask that her back get a lot more energetic than that. And uh, I may end up having to give her a little tap on the nose sometimes, but right now, I've just worked on the concept. Back, two, three, four. Back, two, three, four. Back, two, back, back, back. And see, that got a little more energetic. And what you do is you just ask for a couple more steps at a time so that they're picking up their knees with some energy. And that's all I'll show on that because this is fundamentals. You know, she wouldn't get an A plus grade by Clint Anderson right now, but she gets an A plus by me. And uh, I'll just keep asking for more energy. Okay, and then there's this march method. Whoa. Where you you wiggle the rope, and then after wiggling the rope, you march with your arms. And you march toward them. When you're marching toward them, if they don't back, you actually take the stick and kind of whack them between the legs. So that, what I eventually want is for me to just be able to go like this and have her take a step or two back. Back, two, three, four, wave, two, wait, that was the wiggle wave. Back, two, three, four, march, two, three, four. So I never had to whack her because she immediately started back. And then if I wanted increased energy, if I wanted increased energy, which eventually I will, and again, I'm tilting her head back to me, I would go back, two, three, four, back, two, three, four, back, 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 and just a little whack. Now that doesn't hurt her, it's just a tap, and it just lets her know, hey, I'm serious. Pick up your feet and move and move when I tell you to. So that's how you can get them when you're just making this motion. They'll actually almost run backwards. Watch this. She'll take a step before I even come, take, before I take a step. Back, back. See what that did? Adding that energy made her step back sooner. Where all I required was the jiggle. Jiggle two, three, four. March two, three, four. March two, Wow. 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 and picking up those feet. I don't know if you saw that, but she picked up her feet. So that was the start of increasing the intensity in the back. Doesn't hurt. It's just a tap, tap, tap. Let them know, you know, back up. When you're asking them to back, do it with energy. The next one is wiggle, wave, walk and whack. And again, it's four cues. It's a wiggle, a wave of your stick, and then you walk toward them. And then if they don't back up, now look at that. She took a step with just the wiggle and she learned that right there from increasing the intensity. So wiggle, wave, and I'm gonna be really happy. I'm not gonna move her on because to me, those two or three steps right there were with energy and she really is a genius of a horse. She learns so fast and they were they were with energy and you know she got on back there. She didn't really wait. So wiggle, wave, and look at her go. Walk. Okay. And so I never had to whack her because she got it on the wiggle, the wave, and the whack. And people say, oh, why does he have four signals? Well, here's why he has four signals. Because by me putting on that fourth signal, the next time I came back, all it took was the first signal. To me, that's how I always work with my horses. I give more than one signal, and I exaggerate my cues starting out. 
because, you know, if you exaggerate things, then the next time you come and ask for it, it's not going to need the exaggeration. So if I start with four cues, then I can back off to three, then I can back off to two, then she's going to get it on the first. Watch this. Back. See there? Now, it wasn't with good energy, but I never had to do the second cue. So that's why having more than one cue and increasing the intensity ends up with a horse that will move with fingertip control, just with slight, you know, slight motions. And that wasn't, that definitely wasn't a good example. And then the last is just your traditional backing. And he starts with direct pressure, but then indirect on and off again if they won't move to the direct. So to the direct, back, back, and then bump, bump, bump is the indirect. Good girl. And this will get her to where someday all I'll have to do is take a, a finger and go back, like that, like she's doing now. But it'll be, as I continue to increase the intensity and demand and expect more energy, you know, she will begin to move with more energy, okay? So I'm going to be really happy with that right now because she just successfully did all four back methods. Okay, so I just remembered that there was one thing I didn't do. And this is probably the thing that she does best. So I'm going to stand her at this side and I'm going to flex her laterally and see how she's pulling her nose over to me without me having to tug and fight I want her to pull it all the way to her her belly so you want to teach them to be perfectly soft in doing this and to come on all the way to the belly Eventually, it'll be totally of her own accord. I'll stand here, and she'll know that by me not releasing, I'm expecting more out of her. And there she goes. So now I let her go. So the minute that they give you more than what you asked for, you let them go. Really, you let them go when they get soft, and if they start moving, you don't, you don't just let them have their way. There we go. You go with them. Now for the other side, you can see we've got a backing horse here. Oh yeah, I, thought, I just thought of another one that I forgot. This one I haven't worked too much. And it's important, so I am still going to be working the fundamentals. We're on the opposite side now. And boom, there she goes, giving me more than what I asked for. So I'm going to ask for more. And she came all the way almost to her belly that time. This horse is a genius because I just never really had to spend a lot of time on this. Now she's pull, trying to pull back before relaxing. And so there, I don't know if you saw that, but she came to where I was asking. And then instead of stopping there, she gave me more. There she goes. So she 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 gives you she gives you more than what you asked for, and that's how you get a light horse, a horse that'll give you more than what you asked for. So that when they fill your pinky, she's distracted. When they fill just a pinky, just a pinky, then they'll give it to you. So she's already on the lateral flexion being controlled with. Just a very, very, very light touch. Good girl. And no bit in her mouth. No bit. So she's learning flexing with no bit. So she'll have a soft 